Hi, I bet you're wondering what in the world is chromosome 18? Well, so was I 32 years ago when my daughter Elizabeth was diagnosed with 18Q minus, a missing piece from the end of the long arm of chromosome 18. And she got that diagnosis because when she was born, she essentially had no top lip and no roof to her mouth. And this is what prompted a chromosome study. So 18Q minus is in the same category of conditions as Down syndrome. Unfortunately, in this case, it's a very, very rare condition. In fact, we were told there were only 65 other families in the world that had this. And pretty much, we were going to have to wait and see what, how else Liz would be affected by this. So I have to admit, it did take me about five years to kind of get my act together and decided that wait and see wasn't good enough and we had to do better than that. But when she was first born, we were uh, right on uh, the path to surgical repair and focused on that. But by the time she was two, she was only half the size that she should be. In fact, we were putting her in dresses, doll dresses that matched her older sister Catherine's uh, dresses. She was that tiny. And I said something to her pediatrician about it, that I was concerned about her size. And he informed me that, well, they're all short. I did not find that to be a very adequate answer. And so we spent six months doing what seemed like every test known to medicine and they all came back normal. And then he finally sent us to see a pediatric endocrinologist to do growth hormone testing. And we found out she was severely growth hormone deficient. The problem at that time was, however, that there was some controversy about whether something as expensive as growth hormone therapy should be wasted on a child that wasn't otherwise normal. But we were very lucky we had a progressive uh, doctor who put her right on growth hormone and she started growing like crazy. But she not only got taller, she, her hair grew, her fingernails grew, she put on, she got shape, she wasn't just skin and bones, she had more energy, she seemed more alert. Uh, so it was really an amazing treatment for her. And now I'm thinking, you're wondering, well, you were told they were all short. So are they all growth hormone deficient? Well, that's what I thought. And so I thought, well, maybe there's only 65 other families in the world, but we better find them. And so I asked one of her more sympathetic doctors, how do you find other families? Remember, this is before the internet, so uh, things weren't quite as easy in those days. And his response was, oh, you want to start a support group? So I said, yes. I had no idea what in the world he was talking about. But I got books, made phone calls, and we started the Chromosome 18 Registry and Research Society with the idea that growth hormone treatment would be the first treatment and the first of many treatments in that we would make the chromosome 18 abnormalities the first treatable chromosome abnormalities. Because, in fact, chromosome 18 abnormalities are just a small group. In fact, there are many, many chromosome abnormalities. And collectively, they're the leading cause of intellectual disability, which is a huge obstacle to an independent life. So this is a really important problem for society as a whole, to understand chromosome abnormalities and figure out how to treat them. It affects a lot of people collectively. So I also started then reading uh, medical journals, um, articles about chromosome 18 abnormalities, accompanied, of course, by a medical dictionary so I could figure out what in the world they were talking about. And after about a year, uh, we had 34 families that we'd identified, so we were ecstatic about that. And I was writing to, remember, it's before the internet, so I was writing letters to researchers, doctors, uh, trying to figure out who was interested. And nobody was really interested in the same questions we were interested in. We were interested in how are we going to understand this so we can treat it, even if we have to devise new treatments. 
and others were just interested in, well, how many have a hearing impairment, how many have seizures, I mean, just uh, kind of going nowhere. And so that was very frustrating. We um, felt like we weren't making progress, and our kids were getting older all the time. So what do you do? You can't find the expert you need, so you just have to become the expert yourself. So I enrolled in graduate school and earned a PhD in human genetics. And with the help of many wonderful mentors, now colleagues, we formed the Chromosome 18 Clinical Research Center. This was 26 years ago, and we are the only such center in the world dedicated to the Chromosome 18 abnormalities. And so that means people come here from all over the world to see the world's experts. They come from China, Turkey, Australia, even Houston. And because we are the only place to see the world's experts. But the big issue really is funding. There's no magic federal pot of money to support this kind of work. There's no dedicated fund from the National Institutes of Health for chromosome abnormalities. And even though today we are 2,000 families strong, that's really still not enough. The, those 2,000 families need your help. They need the help of their friends, their families, and their community. And that's why I'm sharing my story with you today, because I know you, like we, believe that every child deserves a chance to succeed. So thank you so much for your help. Goodbye.